Okay, pre-taxi checklist, nav lights as required, radios on and set on Unicom, transponder standby, flaps are up, radio calls as required, so let's do those. <coughs> Let's just have a look at runway 22. So we're going to take off runway 204 with a, uh, let's see, left hand turnout because of the terrain on the right hand side of the runway. So it's going to be uh, a climb to 4,500 feet. Okay. Welshpool Traffic Golf Bravo November Kilo Echo is taxiing to the threshold, um, taking off runway 04 at Welshpool, and we'll have a left-hand turnout climbing up to 4,500 feet southbound VFR, uh, Welshpool Traffic. Okay, so that's my call. Let's go. Taxi area clear. Yep, except for this dude. Taxi area is clear. Uh, throttle apply smoothly and brakes check. Okay, so let's take the brake off. Yeah, okay. Now let's just move away from that dude. Hopefully he moves out of the way. And let's taxi. So we're going to do a quick run-up just before we go across the hold. Okay, brake set. Fuel selector is on both. Mixture is rich. Props, 1800. Set. Um, magnetos. That's a drop of about 110, 120. And the same, about 190 to 100. Back to both. Uh, engine instruments, check. All look good. I love the needle wobbles. That's good. Suction, suction gauge, check. That is uh, 5... Point one usually where is my suction gauge uh, vacuum there it is yeah bang in the middle of five that's good uh, ammeter let's check that uh, my ammeter is here we we're about uh, was that 15 14 15 amps that's good throttle 700 let's just lean for ground operations let's go 900 I, I prefer 900 Okay, before takeoff, um, flight instruments have been set. We're climbing up to 4,000 and we're taking off like so. Uh, radios and avionics have been set. Engine gauges, uh, check. The oil temperature is really low. I don't, well, I suppose that'll come up above 100 soon, but that is quite low. Um, Seat belts and harnesses, correct. Flaps as required. Let's go f and one notch of flaps. Trim set for takeoff. We have uh, takeoff trim. Interesting. I did set that earlier on and that was okay. There we go. Uh, controls, check. Cool. Looking good. Uh, doors and windows have been latched. <clears throat> Brakes, recheck. Okay, before that's the before takeoff checklist. My um, takeoff is VR is 55. So.
Welshpool traffic, Golf Bravo, November Kila Echo is lining up runway 02, backtracking Welshpool traffic. It's going to be a bit of a long lineup, but that's just the way it is. I look forward one day to A2A simulations bringing their Cessna 172 into Microsoft Flight Simulator. Until then, we're just going to be using the WB Sim uh, add on for the default steam gauge Cessna 172, which provides a good kind of middle of the road, above, above stock default systems um, for the 172 until the A2A simulations comes into the sim, which I hope shouldn't be too long. There's the wind. Let's just use the brakes. Don't want to overspeed on this runway. And who's talking here on um, EGLL and EGJJ? Okay, no problem. No, I, I've looked and there's no one around in the region on VATSIM at the moment. Um, I'm just doing my doing a, a VFR flight today from Welshpool down to Bristol. So. Uh, looking forward to it because I haven't done VFR in quite a while and I really need to um, I really need to get practicing again so here we are okay so let's let's use this area here to um, spin around we don't need whole length this evening And this is, uh, this is a scenery for uh, Welsh pool that I found off uh, flightsim.to, which is the best we have until something else comes along. I should have put the strobe on coming across the threshold. That's my mistake. Okay, so mixture is rich. Uh, flaps are set. Flaps are set. Uh, pitch trim is uh, set. Let's just set that, correct. Uh, okay, take off. Uh, ooh, we need to put the transponder on on alt which it is indeed now um, so Walshpool traffic Golf Bravo November Kilo Echo is taking off runway 02 uh, left hand turnout climb 4,000 feet and departure to the south VFR uh, Walshpool traffic okay let's just increase the power <clears throat> speed alive there's 55 and there we go so VY is 74 knots well, let's go VX just for the moment it's 62 Go flaps up. Let's just trim. You can see the terrain to my right hand side at Welsh Pool is uh, problematic, shall we say making the uh, left-hand turn in the climb. Thousand feet. And level. Okay, let's continue this climb. But let's bring the throttle back to 75% and the mixture back to 75% also. So that's kind of my relatively standard uh, climb power setting I like to use. There's some traffic up there. Okay, let's continue this uh, turn. Let's head downwind.
Uh, as far as I can remember, the um, circuit, the circuit altitude at, short, at um, Welshpool is 1800, specifically because of this terrain. And this is a little bit of elevated terrain we're going over here on the uh, left hand downwind. So, seven, 18, 17 to 1800, I believe, is the uh, correct. I should pull that up actually. Welsh pool circuit height. S uh, 1500 feet, in fact. Uh, a quick Google will suggest. So there's that. I see East Midlands has just come online. Okay, so our outbound uh, course from Welshpool into the uh, Midland. We're going to fly first to the Midland Glider Club, which is based at uh, Asterton, um, which is Echo Golf November Papa which is about 124. So now we're up and away from the terrain. Let's turn uh, to head 124. And let's just set the heading bug as a reference. Um, that is 120-ish right there. up through 2,000 feet. Okay, let's look at my climb checklist now. So climb checklist, uh, well, there is no specific checklist. It's just um, showing me my my different speeds, my VX, VY, and my cruise climb. My cruise climb is 85 knots, which is kind of what I'm close to now. So I'm going to use the cruise climb 85 knots. And there's Welsh pool down below me. making sure my transponder's on still. Let's just double check that. Yep, I have mode Charlie engaged on the uh, V-Pilot. I think I can turn off my fuel pump now. Let's turn off my taxi uh, and landing lights and leave the rest of them in there like so. My cruise checklist is ready when needed. Uh, let's actually hold my course, thank you very much. So from here, we need to be heading. Why does my, okay, my heading bug is now set. 124, okay. We need to be on um, heading bug. And this, we need to fly this for about 12 to 12 and a half miles, nautical miles. Let's just increase our throttle to get up to uh, 4,500. I hope you guys can hear me. I'm finding it a little bit on the loud side, so I'm going to turn down the, the aircraft um, the aircraft noise. So we're uh, departing Welshpool to the south east in the climb and heading directly for uh, Echo Golf November Papa, which is, uh, I believe it's disused. I believe it's disused apart from a glider club, and that's as far as I'm aware. All looking good. So we're heading up to 4,500 feet. Um, I've selected 4,500 feet on the autopilot, but I'm actually not going to use the autopilot today. I'm actually going to fly this completely manually, and um, it's going to be a helpful, <coughs> a helpful practice of my manual handling skills. And I do know that the wind is from the north, um, so I feel like I'm going to get pushed off course to the to the right, which is why I've I've got the nose slightly to the left of track um, to try to compensate for that. 
up through 3,300. And of course, that's on the local Q&H of uh, 1020. And we will have to try and get um, some uh, metars from various places to um, use to look at the local Q&H's. EGT is still quite high as I can see. And there's the beep for a thousand feet to go. What a beautiful aircraft. This is the default um, steam gauge um, model. Um, w, WB Sim has released one that has the, um, the wheel shoes removed, which is my personal favorite. I don't like the wheel shoes. I like, I like to have a, uh, a naked Cessna, as, as it were, I suppose. Um, I don't like those wheel covers. I like to see my tires. So now as we're climbing, um, we've got a ridge line. And I believe the airport is on the other side of that ridge line. So let's just continue the climb. Negative two Celsius outside air temperature now, so Just trimming. You can hear the trim every time I press it. I don't. I don't know if I should be squawking seven thousand um, by default. Let me just double check what the UK UK um, uh, VFR squawk code. Yeah, actually, it is seven thousand. I, I am. I am. I am corrected. Just reset that camera. Um, so 7,000 is correct for my my particular situation. Now I know I know that the glider club it should be it's going to be off my 12 one o'clock, maybe 11 o'clock if the wind has pushed me to the right hand side. Uh, oh, does is that is that it there on the hill? That actually might be it on actually on the ridge line itself. <clears throat> I believe that might actually be it that I can see right right there. Yeah, I can faintly see the runways. So we'll we'll have a look at that as we come over um, it on our kind of left hand side. And on my uh, flight plan, my next leg from here is uh, due south, which is uh, on a heading of one eight one. And uh, it's going to be a, a 16, about a 16 nautical mile um, leg to my next waypoint. Yeah, there we go, confirmed. Now let's uh, start to trim out. Let's trim out and let's just bring the... Let's go 2300 RPM. And let's lean out the engine. Okay, that's that's a nice efficient lean lean setting, and let's just trim um, and get this aircraft nice and stable. Yeah, that's definitely uh, where I was. You can tell that it's definitely not a an in use airport anymore. Um, that is a really awkward place to build an airport. Uh, I don't really know why anyone would build that there, but. Um, Maybe I have to do some research on it later. Interesting, interesting uh, terrain around there. That must be a very challenging to fly in and out of. And of course, gliders, apparently gliders are the only place, but it's a great place for gliding, as you can see, all the ridge lift that they would gain up and down this range. That's really nice. Okay, so let's turn due south. Let's do a rate one turn to the right-hand side. You can see my rate turn and my turn coordinator. Slight drop of the nose, which is to be expected in the turn, and level out, holding roughly south. Okay, and hold it there. Okay, looking good, and let's just center my heading bug again just to. Um, one eight 
I think 182, 181. So apparently in the default Cessna, whenever you manipulate the heading bug, it doesn't update on the little tag. Um, you have to you have to get rid of the tag and then move the cursor back over and it will update 181 for you. Which I'm uh, not used to, but there we go. Okay, so the next waypoint is actually an NDB. So we can tune that right now. That is uh, Sh uh, Shobden. Shobden at Echo Golf Bravo Sierra and that's going to be 426 so let's hit uh, let's go uh, 426 like so and let's see what happens yay there we go so we just basically fly inbound that uh, ADF which is fun and I love I love the uh, needle flicker that's really cool that's part of the uh, W sim um, that's the part of the WSIM update to the default Cessna that you've got all of the gauges are wobbling and all the needles wobble, which is, is the way it would accurately be. And I believe also there is um, NDB frequency degradation. So as you fly further away from the NDB, it, it gradually uh, flickers more and more and more until the, it just dies completely, uh, as, opposed to, um, as opposed to the needle being full full signal and then zero signal and going snapping back to uh, its arresting state immediately so just taking a sip of tea I'm slightly slightly low but that's okay it's okay being uh, you know 10 20 30 40 50 feet slightly low because if I've stated to ATC that this is where I'm going to be um, he needs to block out that altitude and if he's got things flying above me, it's much more dangerous if I'm flying above my stated altitude than it is if I'm flying below my stated altitude VFR. So um, that shouldn't be a big problem. There we go. This, what a lovely evening. Look at this. What a lovely evening. And what a lovely aircraft. I've missed flying the Cessna 172. I think the last time I flew the Cessna 172 for a YouTube channel video was way back, like my first actual Microsoft Flight Simulator video was the default 172 in and out of uh, Santa Barbara, I believe. Um, goodness me, that was, what must it have been, two, three years ago now, that's crazy. So, uh, Volanta is showing me about half an hour away from Bristol at this point, so not too far. Hopefully we'll get there before sunset, although I have a feeling we'll, we'll be just after sunset by the time we're landing. Okay, so my, v my, my VOR1 needle is showing VLOC. My, my, GPS, my VOR2 needle is showing GPS. If I hit that button, yeah, there we go, we've, we've got two VORs. Um, I'm... Do I have any VORs on my actual flight plan today? I don't believe I do. So I'm not actually tracking any VORs. So there is uh, Brecon Beacon, of course, which is in the vicinity, but uh, um, I'm not going to use it as a, as a nav point, of course. I'm just using the uh, ADF this evening, which is a lot of fun. It's basically just point and shoot and adjust as the wind dictates. So I'm hoping, um, while I'm in cruise, I can just, I'll can i just talk a bit more about what's going on on the channel. Um, it could be, I suppose this could be a little bit of a channel update video. Um, what I'm seeking to do uh, this year, 2024, is actually produce a lot more high quality content as opposed to just spend my time doing low quality, in my opinion, low quality content, which is just random live streams where I'm not horrendously pre-prepared for it or anything like that. Um, so, so that's what I'm doing. So at the moment, I'm actually uh, restarting my PPL training series um, videos. So I'm, I'm currently working on the next two videos in that series. So I'm looking forward to getting those out to you guys. I am going to, um, I suppose, kickstart or re restart my air my airport my airport series, which is where I um, release videos on 
individual VFR airfields around the UK and further afield. Um, so at the moment I'm currently working on a video of Exeter Airport, which is going to be fun. Um, which is quite a unique little airfield uh, on the south coast. So I'm doing that. Um, so I'm quite busy behind the scenes. I'm just not probably going to be spending a huge amount of time doing big long live streams um, as much. Maybe maybe I'll squeeze them in as and when I can, but um, I'm happy to say that I am... Uh, I am um, I see I'm just listening to the tone of my engine I think I need to just add myself a little bit more power I'm gonna you know what let's go to 2400 rpm I feel like I need a little bit more power here I'm down to uh, 90 knots indicated so um, what was I saying um, yes Oh, I'm, I'm actually almost overhead my waypoint now. Yep, there's the airfield below me. Shobden. And there is... There is 4,500. Let's just trim those down to adjust a little bit for that faster speed. And you can see Shobden EGBS on the, uh, on the GPS there. And then from Shobden, I go directly into the uh, Seven Bridge VRP, which from here is a bearing of uh, 167 for about 39 to 40 nautical miles. So from here, let's go um, 167, which is about there ish. 16987. There we go, 167, set. So not a huge adjustment, just a little bit to the left. And uh, we're going overhead. Can we see it? Not quite. I think I think that's about it right there. Uh, oh, let's just hold that and let's just descend slightly. There we go, directly overhead. And trim, 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 trim. Okay, bring it down. What was I saying? So yes, I'm uh, I'm looking forward to producing this this content for you. Um, I'm writing scripts. I'm I'm video editing. Um, I'm having a lot of fun. Um, but I've made it a bit of a I've made it a bit of a a decision of mine in 2024 that rather than spam out live stream content I am going to focus on quality as opposed to quantity so I hope you're going to enjoy that and um, if you guys are still looking to learn about VFR in uh, the 172 and other small aircraft um, stick around and uh, you'll you'll see the the PPL training series videos um, be resurrected um, and that playlist being added to as well as the airfield uh, list as well so there we go look at this look at this Sun I, I love I love Microsoft flight simulators lighting and texturing all the all the modern conveniences of uh, of the modern graphics is all lovely but not sacrificing um, f simulator fidelity. That's more important than graphics any day of the week. So. We do our best. I mean, um, it's, it's, it's been, it's just been one of those things for me. Um, I've needed to, I've needed to, uh, swap over my my hard drives were getting full of of content and I needed to eventually make a decision I made the decision to come over to Microsoft Flight Simulator exclusively uh, uh, for my content creation and uh, I do have P3D uh, or a version of P3D installed at the moment for the uh, A2A simulations B377 Stratocruiser 
Um, but apart from that, I am pretty much fully in the Microsoft Flight Simulator space now. Um, so, the performance in Microsoft Flight Simulator for me is uh, far, far better than it ever was in P3D. Um, and especially in little aircraft like this, the performance is really, really good. Um, my, my performance does suffer sometimes with the high fidelity aircraft going into large airports on Batam. I think my, uh, I think the frame rates of my previous video in the Comanche coming into East Midlands that the other night was, uh, was you know, late in December. That that was the the, the performance was pretty bad, um, sadly. Um, but I've uh, I've got an, an RTX 2070 Super, um, and uh, the frame gen the frame gen mod doesn't really work for me. I've not managed to get it working so. Um, sadly, until until that comes along, I won't see any performance boosts anytime soon. So it's just about being uh, being realistic about my computer's performance level, and just enjoying the sim for what it is, and not worrying too much about um, about getting horrendously good graphics, but but just smooth performance. That's what's more important than than uh, than full full sliders up to the max for graphics, really. Um, when I'm when I'm thinking about it, so uh, let's just double check Vatsim, see if uh, anything else has come online while we've been gone. It would be nice if Bristol just popped on, but alas, I don't think he will. And uh, we can see above us. I believe that line above us, that contrail, is um, an A. Uh, it's an A three hundred going from Shannon into somewhere I don't know. He is up at uh, flight level 390. So I do like on uh, in Microsoft Flight Simulator when you engage Vatsim, you can actually see the contrails of Vatsim flights, which is really cool. You could in P3D and other things, it's just that, again, I think it just, the whole package looks better. Um. <clears throat> oh, I'm drifting to the left slightly. Let's just adjust. I can see the beginnings of the River 7 off the 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock long range. So I know I'm, I'm going in the right direction for the River 7. Just need to make sure that uh, I'm not going above 4,500 feet. And of course, the uh, the temperature is negative three outside. So if I do run into some moisture, it's going to be a problem. So um, I might consider dropping down before I hit that moisture. Um, I am VFR, so I don't know that I want to be inside that moisture level going across the river. So I might drop down. You can see, yeah, there you go. There's that ADF degradation. You can see it getting uh, fainter and fainter and the, the needle having a time, having a harder time to hold that. And then, and then eventually it's just going to go silent. So that's really good to see. This is my first serious flight with the WB SIM add-on for the default Cessna 172. So um, I'm looking forward to seeing just how detailed this is. For those of you who may be using this yourself, um, let me know your experiences with this. I'd be interested to know in the comments below um, how you feel about it and uh, just exactly how detailed you find it to be. Um, Obviously, compared to something like A2A simulations, it's not going to be as good, but um, it's just my stopgap. It's going to be my stopgap until until I get something else. Um, my EGT is pretty high, and I think that's because let's just let's just okay. There's the drop. So we're really that EGT really is on the edge. Um, my mixture has leaned out to roughly 50%. Yeah, roughly just just under 
mixture. So um, I'm leaned out pretty well. Of course, until we get the uh, A2A simulations 172, we will we'll then be able to see the uh, individual cylinder firing uh, analytics that the, their uh, their AccuSim 2.0 gives us, which will be really cool. Um, we're a little bit high on the RPM. Let's just bring that down, tweak that. Everything looks good. Temperatures and pressures all look stable. And I wonder, the chronometer is showing 0.8 hours on the clock. I wonder if, um, yeah, and I've got 0.8 hours on the airframe. I wonder if uh, it, it tracks time uh, like the A2A simulations um, Comanche does. I wonder if when I log off and log back on again, I'll still have that 0.8 hours on the clock. It'd be interesting to see. I wonder if that's tied to the individual registrations that I, that I use. I'm not sure, but we'll find out uh, whenever I log off and log back on again. So there's the River 7, and we're looking for the, uh, the VRP point for Bristol, which is the Old 7 Bridge. Um, I'm a little bit low now. Let's just continue making sure that's... Yeah, I think that's my, uh, my, my altimeter. Uh, let's actually... Yeah, at this point, let's grab the meta for um, Bristol. Yeah, I don't like that sink. I, I want to maintain that 4,500. So let's grab the meta. Okay, six, six Celsius on the ground at Bristol. Uh, the Q&H is 1019. What? What am I doing? Why is that beeping continually? I th maybe my altitude. Let's just increase my thrust and just make sure we stay up at 4,500 because I think that beeping is due to the fact that my um, Bendix King is uh, identifying that I'm significantly blow below where I should be. I think that's why that beep. Yeah, that beep's gone away now. <clears throat> so coming back to 2400 RPM and uh, the aircraft should level out as it's been trimmed to do. Okay, so I w where was I? Minimum VFR. Uh, there is an overcast layer at 2600. Now I said to myself I didn't want to go through this um, moisture. So uh, after this moisture, by the VRP point, I will begin my descent to be underneath that layer, which is 2600. So I'm going to go down to 2,000 feet, I think, to maintain VFR with the ground. So yeah, the ceiling is 2,600 feet at Bristol. Q and H is 1019, and visibility is 10 kilometers. Uh, the wind is 330 at seven. So that's actually a right-hand crosswind if we're coming in on runway 27. And um, yeah, the overcast layer is, uh, like we say, 2,600, and the ambient outside air temperature is six degrees. Uh, so. I think I. I think that's the uh, I think that's the traffic at Bristol on Unicom. Yeah. Yeah, I might just about squeak in VFR. Do a little screenshot there. Beautiful aircraft. Okay, so the old the old bridge is on that peninsula just there. So I, you can visually identify on the chart where you need to be crossing the River Seven, which is right there. So we're on course. 
That's called the Old Severn Bridge. The new one is further down, we'll see that as we cross. Uh, but I believe for now I'm going to begin my descent down to about 2,000 feet. So in the descent, let's go to my descent checklist. Um, pre-descent, well pre-descent, fuel selector is on both, power as required, mixture enriching, flight instruments set, engine gauges monitor. Okay. Yeah, and there's there's the beep. Okay, I'm gonna come down to 2,000 feet now. Bristol traffic, easy 14. Uh, Tango was he was vacated and uh, may have broken a couple backs of that one. Okay, so it's going to be a, uh, a, v a VFR approach to Bristol, so we're going to enter the downwind. Um, now, of course, there's no, air there's no ATC online at Bristol, so there's no ATC to tell us if they want a left or a right-hand downwind. But for runway 27, I'm going to enter right downwind, runway 27. Um, let's just have a look at my charts and see uh, what the... The Bristol Airport um, circuit altitude is. Bristol traffic is 40 times the rescue enough. Okay, I'm sourcing the VFR, the Kix VFR Club Bristol um, chart. Um, I'm a part of the Kix VFR Club. I have, I need to, I need to, I need to really um, hang out with those guys a lot more than I do. I, well, I. I haven't in such a long time. I need to go and hang out with them. So um, let's just have a look at the plate. We have, uh, let me see. The field elevation is 622 feet. Circuits, uh, 1,000 feet QFE or, and jets are 1,500 feet QFE. So they're not going to give me, the, the, the meta isn't going to give me um, Yeah, no, sorry, the, the, the meta isn't going to give me the, uh, the local QFE So I'm just going to have to go off the QN, QFH, sorry, QNH So I'm going to have to go off the QNH and I'm literally just going to fly if, if, the, if the circuit is a thousand feet QFE for VFR traffic I'm literally going to add um, 622 to that. So my, my, I know my circuit is, should be at six, just above 1600 feet. Um, so that's how I'm going to manage that. <clears throat> oh, look at this. Look at this beautiful, beautiful scenery. What a beautiful, um, the lighting is just beautiful. Um, it's just just beautiful. I just can't get enough of it here. Let's just get me a lovely looking. Oh. Maybe I'll get a shot at some point. I don't know. Okay, coming down to 2,000 feet. So uh, at 2,000 feet, let's just level out. So we made it to the old bridge. So let's just... Increase my uh, power back up to 2400 rpm and Make sure that we're trimmed correctly for that So um, The next VRP is further in it's the Avon bridge or Avon bridge Avon bridge and from from the old bridge. It's actually It's actually uh, one nine of five So let's go one. Oh, oh Let's just...
I'm just I'm just transfixed by the view there. Just that river, the curve of the river and the bridge. It just looks amazing. So let's uh, go out. One nine three four five set. So uh, once we cross over the bridge, we need to make a call on Unicom uh, to the Bristol traffic so that they know what's going on. Bristol traffic, Colgan three two one, has pushed back and is taxing to Holden Point Runway two seven. Departure for London Heathrow. Shortly taxing Holden Point Runway 27. Bristol traffic, Golf Bravo November Kilo Echo is 2,000 feet over the old 7 VRP, uh, turning south inbound the Avon Bridge VRP to join right downwind runway 27. Uh, Bristol traffic. Oh, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Bristol traffic, EZ57 Bravo Tango is on the four mile final, runway 27. Okay, so um, that little inlet, that's where the bridge is. So we need to be watching for that. And as soon as we hit that, it's not that much further to the airport. In fact, you'll probably start to see a few lights. Actually, you can see the strobes long range of the EasyJet on final approach. That's how cool, that's how cool Microsoft Flight Simulator's visual lighting system is. Yep, I can, I can see a strobe on the ground there as well. So that's where the airfield is. And it's just, we're essentially going from here up and then joining right right downwind for 27. <clears throat> so what a what an amazing looking sim. I'm just gonna take more screenshots. Oh, he says as all of the cloud cover Bristol just changes. Traffic, Hogan, three, two, one is at Holden Point for runway two seven and is Holden waiting for arriving traffic. See, that's the new bridge. That's the new seven bridge. That's the old seven bridge. Good old Unicom calls. That's uh, good, good practice. Okay, so let's just look at my uh, checklists. So the, the downwind entry checklist is fuel selector is on both, mixture full rich, Rottle, throttle as required, uh, roughly 85 knots, and then landing lights and strobes as required, ignition on both, master switches on, seat belts and the harnesses checked. Okay, so that's the entry downwind checklist complete. Um, the only thing we've got to do is mixture rich, entering uh, right downwind, and adjust the throttle. Oh, look at that sunset, isn't that beautiful? Wow. And there's the bridge. Just off our 12 o'clock. Take some screenshots. I'm enjoying this. I need to do this a lot more often. Oh, goodness me. That is uh, Filton. That's Filton right there on my left. Good thing no one was coming out of Filton. So. So we know the circuit altitude is um, 1,600 feet. So we don't really have m much to descend. We only have one, two, three, four, maybe 400 feet to descend to get Mr. into. Traffic easy, 57 Bravo Tango has to get it on way 27. Taxi into <coughs> sound 5, uh, Golf and to And we've just scooted just underneath the layer, which is great. Three Celsius now, so we're not not too much in trouble of icing. Traffic, Logan, three, two, one is now taxing. And you never know. Departure runway two seven. Okay, just crossing the uh, 
Bristol Traffic Golf Bravo November Kilo Echo is crossing the Avon Bridge VRP. Uh, next stop is uh, visual of the field and a join of the right downwind for runway 27, Bristol Traffic. Bristol Traffic, organ 321 is lining up runway 27 for a prompt departure. That is a screenshot and a half. I can't deny. Goodness me, that's gonna be that's gonna be my thumbnail. <laughs> Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Okay, so from here we can see the field and we're gonna join just about here. Um, so let's descend to circuit altitude and let's go mixture rich. We can we can throttle back there slightly. Wow, what what a what a sight. Let's go um, landing and taxi lights on. And let's go the fuel pump on. Okay, there's circuit altitude there. And I can start to feel a little bit of turbulence now, and that's from the terrain uh, around us. Oh, oh, bit low, bit low, let's pull up. So 27 is the, uh, is the runway, which is due west. Let's just pick it up. Oh, there's the aircraft taking off. Uh, the runway heading is actually 267. Set, 267 set. <clears throat> yeah, I need to be a little bit higher here. Look at that aircraft taking off. Isn't that a beautiful? Wow. Okay, there is the runway. Let's just get this aircraft up to circuit altitude. And I'm gonna turn onto the right base. Bristol traffic, Golf Bravo November Kilo Echo is turning right, is joining right base runway 27. Bristol traffic, organ 321 has just departed runway 27. Passing through 3,100 feet, climbing flight level 150, turning eastbound for Heathrow. Okay, on the downwind. Okay, so the, the, uh, the entry downwind check is complete. The landing checklist is uh, uh, da, 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 on final gumps check. So let's check my cylinder head temperatures engine temperatures, fuel flow, all is looking good. And uh, Bristol traffic, Golf Bravo, November Kilo Echo turning right base, runway 27, Bristol traffic. Bristol traffic, Monarch 223 Heavy, taxi runway 27, holding Alpha X flight, Bristol traffic. Okay, first notch of flaps. Okay, let's start pulling the uh, propeller back and uh, beginning to descend slightly because we are a little bit short final. <laughs> We will be short final very, very soon. Bristol traffic, Golf Bravo Kilo is turning final, short final, runway 27, Bristol traffic. Okay, another notch of flaps. And I think my flap noise is a little bit, set a little bit too high in uh, in my uh, 
add-on app, so I will sort that out, but not now. Okay, flaps full, flaps full, um, and mixture is rich, lights are on, and here we go. Over the threshold, 70 knots. Okay, throttle idle. Oh yes. That's how you land an aircraft. That was beautiful. And I can actually uh, make this taxiway point. Bristol traffic, Golf Bravo, November Kilo Echo is off runway 27, taxing by hotel to general aviation parking. Bristol traffic. Okay. Bristol traffic, Monarch 223, lining up runway 27. Okay, lean for ground operations and uh, turn the various lights off. And uh, after landing, throttle 1000 RPM. Set. Mixture, lean for taxi, flaps are up, trim is uh, neutral, uh, not quite neutral probably, yeah. Let's just hit neutral on the trim, like so. Uh, transponder, we need to go standby. Set, uh, unnecessary avionics off, lol. Um, and radio calls as frequency, yeah, okay. So. This is Relic Monarch, 233 rolling, which is That's an A300 with uh, no livery on it, so I'm not quite sure what it's supposed to be, but we'll have a look. Um, we'll have a look after we park. So uh, thank you for joining me for that, guys. I really enjoyed that. I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed that. I've got to do this a lot more often. Um, I feel like I kind of lost my way f last year in just producing content that wasn't wasn't this and I feel like this is a lot more what what I used to love of old and what you guys used to love of old as well um, so hopefully if you if you like the slow and VFR ish stuff uh, on Vatsim um, I'm hoping to I'm hoping to produce that uh, soon this year for you um, yeah I should have been watching where I was taxing but uh, there we go I seem to remember there was uh, I'm confusing Bristol with Cardiff there's there's tax there's parking yeah, it's kind of similar Cardiff is similar to Bristol in its taxi layout and I was getting it confused with somewhere else but yeah I seem to I remember now this is this is where the uh, VFR traffic usually usually parks so I'm just gonna swing it around and uh, I'm just going to throw it there. Okay, so avionics is going off. Lights uh, are going off, like so. Pito heat's going off. Engine basically idle. Mixture idle cutoff, and then wait for the propeller to stop spinning before turning the mags off. And that, I believe, is that. Um, I don't know in the sim how to... Uh, I don't know in the sim how to get, I forgot how to get this WB sim menu working, but I'll do my best to get that working and uh, and uh, try and put some chocks and stuff on the aircraft uh, before I log off. But thank you very much guys for watching, hope you enjoyed that, and um, uh, I hope this is the beginning of um, a lot of uh, VFR content coming to the, the sim this year. So I feel like I've started the year off uh, on a good foot. So yeah, 
Have a good evening. Bye.